Overstrike started as a pitch from Brian Allgaier, who's the creative director on the title, and he pitched a four-player co-op game that featured four secret agents. The idea was it was a much of the 1970s James Bond flicks, and it was very campy. And we realized as we got into production that we were being held back by our own decision to be a T game because for us, we realized that we were lacking impact. We weren't doing enough bad things to enemies, I guess. That was my feeling about it. And we said, let's forget about the T rating. Let's forget about this idea that they have to be super stylized can't be characters, and let's just go for broke with the weapons and see what we can do. When that happened, then it was a huge ingredient when it came to the tone shift. The other ingredient was re the realization that we had not tied gameplay and story together very tightly. We had this idea of a MacGuffin in the game, this alien substance that you were chasing across the globe, but it had nothing to do with gameplay. And we had these cool weapons that we were thinking about and, and starting to prototype, but they weren't tied to this substance. And so, what we wanted to do was figure out how to mesh the two much more closely. And I think that for most developers, that's a, that is a big goal. So we took Fuse and we made it an integral part of the weapons. And we made it an integral part of the game's progression system. And Fuse will continue to be an integral part of this franchise and this mythology that we're creating. That coupled with the more, call it grounded tone, brought us to a place that we're much happier with in terms of the game's identity. What we're trying to do is present a new approach to four-player co-op. Now, there are other games that have four-player co-op out there, but our goal was to make sure that all four characters you play provide unique experiences. And by being able to leap back and forth between them at will and upgrade these characters however you want, whenever you want, it gives players a lot more we think, strategic opportunities and more player choice in terms of how they play through the game. And to be fair, we weren't thinking about all those things at the very beginning. A lot of us felt at the very beginning that we shouldn't allow you to switch. We should lock you in like most games do. Like if you play a lot of MMOs today, you make your choice at the very beginning and you stick with that choice. That's not what we want to provide in Fuse. We want to give players a hell of a lot more opportunity to just play the game however they want. We've been in situations before where we've been waiting on tenor hooks for people's response to an MIP. This is a different one for us because we unveiled Overstrike as one thing a year ago and now we're re-unveiling it as Fuse. And so we haven't been in a position before where we're seeing this dual response where we're kind of in some ways competing against ourselves. We're an independent developer. We own our own intellectual property. We own Fuse and we are very proud of what we're making. And more important to us than anything is fan feedback is knowing that people really enjoyed playing the game. And for me, nothing means more than having someone recognize the fact that I'm an insomniac and say, oh, I really loved playing Spyro, or I loved playing Ratchet and Clank, or I remember the first time I played through Resistance and then the second time and then the third time. Those are the comments that make all of us here feel great about what we do every day. That gives us the energy to get through what are absolutely tough times when it comes to the creative process because it's never ever easy. And some of the feedback we've gotten from the tone shift has been that some of us players really liked the trailer that you released in 2011. That trailer had a more campy, cartoony, stylized feel, and I get that. We weren't really showing gameplay, we were showing the promise of gameplay. But what's, what's important to note is that back then, the gameplay actually was pretty similar. We had Dalton with a shield, we had Izzy with her glue gun, which was essentially her crowd control weapon. We had Naya going invisible. What we changed was the look. We've definitely taken the characters in a more grounded direction, but they're still stylized. And we've made the humor less campy and more sophisticated. Now I know that it's hard to understand that there's humor in the game from reading an article, but we've spent a lot of time making sure that the story still has humor in it and that it's a, say, a drier form. But these characters don't take themselves completely seriously, and that's important to us. And at the same time, we want to hear from our fans, good and bad, and we really do welcome that feedback. Uh, we take it seriously.